Hello everybody and welcome back to another ship review episode and today I'm going to be looking at this glorious piece of Japanese naval engineering the Yamato tier 10 awesome battleship. I mean historically she was sort of useless uh, didn't really do all that much but of course we are talking about the Yamato in World of Warships and here she is awesome. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over her stats in port and tell you all the things that you need to know about her. And then I'm going to recommend captain skills, modules, and then of course show you all some gameplay from this epic low pen machine. So without much further hesitation, let's get going. First things first, let's talk about the survivability of the Yamato, one of its legendary aspects. Even in real life, I mean, the US Navy had to send like 300 plus aircraft at the Yamato, and it still took a metric ton of bombs and torpedoes before it finally went down. And that same survivability does appear in-game. She's got the highest HP pool of any ship in the game at 97,200. Um, she has phenomenal torpedo protection. If she takes hits off her torpedo bulge, damage reduction of 55%, which is amazing when you compare it to something like the Montana, which stock off the torpedo bulge, 39% reduction. So Yamato can eat a lot more torpedoes. She still will sink if you hit her with enough, though. But of course, the thing we have to really talk about is Yamato armor. And in World of Warships, if the Yamato is angled, good luck trying to penetrate her with armor piercing. Unless you're, of course, in another Yamato. Because Yamato armor is glorious Nippon steel folded thousand times over and applied everywhere on the ship. You've got max citadel armor of 410 millimeters, and you have an armor deck that's 200 millimeters thick. It's the reason why when you're playing against the Yamato and you happen to be in a Montana and you fire armor piercing at an angled Yamato, you're basically firing pillows or marshmallows. You're not really firing armor piercing shells. So because the Yamato has such awesome armor, most players just end up giving up firing armor piercing at her and resort to firing high explosive because high explosive ignores armor. And of course, if you choose to use that ammunition, what you're simply doing is acknowledging that the Yamato is amazing and that you can't kill her except for using ammunition that's designed for pathetic scrubs. Then, of course, we have to move on to the other thing the Yamato is legendary for, and that is her guns, the size of her guns. She's got 460 millimeter guns, these awesome, awesome weapons basically make the Yamato a massive low pen machine. So first things first, let's take a look at the gun stats. The Yamato's guns reload every 30 seconds, which is pretty nice, but they do have one thing that's not that great. They traverse in 72 seconds. So her guns don't really rotate very quickly. They're sort of more like a war spite in playstyle. But if you're used to the way the war spite plays, the Yamato will be fine. And of course, remember her, the Yamato, she's great just bow in, being angled, because when you're angled, you laugh at everybody else who's trying to fire armor piercing at you, while you just ignore their armor with your return fire. So, slow turret traverse, not a big deal. Moving on, there's two kinds of shells, obviously, high explosive and armor piercing. If you're firing a high explosive in a Yamato, you're seriously doing something wrong in this game, and you really need to just, like, quit playing if that's what you're doing at tier 10. Use armor piercing all the time. Yamato armor piercing does amazing damage, 14,800 per shell if you hit a citadel, but even if you don't hit citadels, just penetration, you'll do close to 5,000 damage per shell. So just think about if you're using only your two four turrets and firing six shells, if you only hit like three of them, that's 15,000 damage, just penetration alone. So Yamato is awesome when it comes to guns. Oh yes, the dispersion number it doesn't look great, but it's dispersion at 26.6 kilometers, which means that the Yamato's overall dispersion tends to be really, really tight. And if you add an accuracy module and you aim well, you will definitely hit things for loads and loads of damage. So, so far, Yamato has ultimate armor and glorious guns. Is that all, or does she have more secrets that she's good at? Well, she does, and they involve the other armament that she carries. Her secondary guns. Yamato has a lot of secondary guns, and they're also amazing in-game. 
First things first, she's got these 127mm dual purpose guns, and then they figure let's throw some more onto the Yamato, and she's got more of these 127mm guns. In fact, if you add them all together, she has 12 of these dual 127mm guns around the ship, 6 per side, which is basically equivalent of an Atlanta's worth of firepower on one side of the ship. Then the designers of the ship figured, hey, let's also throw on some heavy cruiser guns, and they strapped two of these triple 155mm guns. Yeah, the same ones that you see on the Mogami-class heavy cruisers, because why the hell not? If you're going to make a giant behemoth of a battleship, you might as well cram every single possible weapon onto it. In-game, these guns are fantastic. 7km stock range, not counting skills, not counting modules. So if you want to go for a full secondary build, the Yamato has a very, very terrifying secondary punch as well. You basically have the equivalent of two Atlantis strapped to the side of your battleship. And if you get the proper captain skills, they all act like small lasers in terms of dispersion. So if you're a destroyer and you get spotted within the secondary range, good luck trying to get away. Of course, then we got to talk about the Yamato's only real weakness, and her only real weakness is the fact that her AA is kind of meh. She's got these 127mm guns that actually are great for anti-surface work, but anti-air they're kind of bad. They don't do a lot of damage, and their range is 5km, which is pretty standard. The majority of the Yamato's AA DPS lies in these triple 25mm A guns, which were pathetic historically, and they're not that great in-game. She's got a lot of them, but they don't have a lot of range, going out to only 3.1 kilometers. And yeah, the Yamato's A is just kind of not that great. However, if you just decide to stick next to, let's say, something like a Des Moines, you will do absolutely fine because you are basically a floating fortress of guns, and all you need is just one little bit of AA protection and your gold. Moving on to maneuverability, and while you're talking about the biggest battleship ever built, a 70,000 plus ton behemoth, Maneuverability is not going to be all that great. Her speed is fine, 27 knots is certainly respectable on a battleship. Turning circle radius of 900 meters is kind of... it's alright. I mean, if you take a look at the Montana, it's 950, so 900 is okay, even better than the Montana. Rudder shift time, 22.1 seconds, is not amazing. But again, you're not really doing too, too much turning in Yamato, so that's perfectly acceptable amount of maneuverability. Her concealment stock of 18 kilometers on the surface and 16 kilometers uh, from the air doesn't look amazing. However, if you opt for a full stealth build, the Yamato becomes, well, very stealthy ninja, which is kind of weird when you're talking about a massive battleship. But yes, you could have a Yamato pop up within 13 kilometers and go, surprise, I'm here, and then they delete you afterwards. Alright, so we've looked at the stats, let's look at some of the other things. In terms of consumables, I would say go ahead and get yourself the premium damage control party. Get the premium repair kit, although for the aircraft you can go for the free version for either the spotting aircraft, which is not really useful, or just get a free catapult fighter. So that's what I would recommend for consumables, moving on to the upgrades. Um, well, there's a change coming in 0.5.7, which is going to change all the modules around. So the best I can do is sort of make generalized recommendations. With the Yamato, there's sort of, I think, two major builds. One, you primarily build around your primary guns, and the other one is building for secondaries. So what you're going to be looking at, uh, with even the changes, is you're going to ideally want to find modules that, let's say if you're going for the main guns first, uh, you want to buff things that uh, improve the durability of your main guns and prevent them from getting knocked out. Uh, you want to consider things like uh, Gunfire Control System Modification 1, or whatever variation comes in 0.5.7. Anything that helps the dispersion of those main guns. And then, of course, on the third slot, um, anything that really helps with rate of fire. That's if you're going to be playing with your main guns. And the reason why you want to go for rate of fire, even at the expense of turret traverse speed, is because nothing's more terrifying than a Yamato that can reload once every 26.4 seconds. That's a very, very terrifying thing to go up against because mm, they, well, they reload really, really quickly and the shells hurt when they hit home. 
On the fourth slot, I would say take damage control system modification one because you do get focus quite a bit and anything that helps reduce the chances of flooding and fire is going to be helpful. Also, damage control system modification one does also decrease your torpedo damage, sorry, increases your torpedo damage reduction by 1%, which caps out, I believe, at 56%. On the fifth slot, you've got a couple of choices here because all of them are going to be viable coming the next patch as well. Uh, I would say damage control system modification 2 is a pretty good choice if you want to, again, spend less time on fire and less time flooding. So that's helpful. You can also definitely get uh, steering gears modification or propulsion modification, especially with those changes coming to propulsion modification. And on the final slot, I would still say out of the two, get concealment system mod 1 because, again, nothing more terrifying than a humongous Yamato battleship popping out at like 13 kilometers and scaring the life out of you. Um, then, of course, if you're going for like secondary armament build, obviously you want to go for the secondary oriented modules. Anything to buff secondary durability, anything to buff secondary range and max dispersion, anything to increase how fast secondary guns fire. Those are all very useful. Although you could opt for on the third slot, even if you're running a secondary build, is to discard the secondary battery mod 3 and get main battery mod 3 so you get sort of a hybrid main guns and secondary build there. And of course, everything else reasonably the same as well. All right, moving on to captain skills. Because captain skills are important, I would definitely say start with situational awareness because you do want to know if there are pesky little destroyers close to you. If you're going with main battery mod 3 and you're going to sacrifice some turret traverse speed for increased rate of fire, expert marksman is going to be your best friend. Third row, a lot of choices. You can go for either high alert to speed up the uh, damage control party, because like I said, you do get focused and you do spend a lot of time on fire, so get that. Vigilance could be helpful if you want to spot torpedoes early. However, they're not as big of a threat as the Japanese destroyer torpedoes are a little bit easier to spot now. Or you could get superintendent, get that extra heal and make yourself last even longer in battle. Personally, I would take right now, depending on my playstyle, I think most times I would still take Vigilance. I just want to spot those things a little earlier. Um, so, you know, I would go for that. However, I would definitely say um, High Alert or Superintendent are very viable alternatives. Fourth row, I still think there's only one really viable one, which is Advanced Firing Training, because you gain both a bonus to the range of your secondaries and you get a bonus to AA. And AA being your weakness, why the hell not? The survivability expert of adding 4,000 HP really doesn't do all that much for a Yamato. And on the fifth row, there are three skill choices as well. You can either go for manual fire control for secondary armament, make your secondary armament like little lasers, and um, they have basically no dispersion, so that's awesome. You can get for that. Or get concealment expert, which is what I love running because, like I said, you pop that on, and you're going to pop up next to somebody at like 13 kilometers and scare the crap out of them. Although, Jack of All Trades is also viable, because if you equip Jack of All Trades and you equip something like High Alert, and you know all these other skills that decrease the reload time of your consumables, you can get a damage control party and repair kit back very, very quickly. So Jack of All Trades is definitely a viable skill as well. Once you're through the first 15 skills, you can get things like basics of survivability because less time flooding, less time fire, fantastic. You could also get basic firing training, improve your AA and secondaries a little bit more. You can get things like high alert. See, that's a very, very good skill you can opt for or superintendent. Um, you can also get things potentially like fire prevention. Not that useful, but again, any reduction to fire chance will be good, even if it's minimal. And that pretty much does it from the port view for the Yamato. Let's take a look at how she performs in battle. So first up, we got a couple of clips from Comrade Brosk, who is playing a Yamato spec with rate of fire, uh, not secondary. And I'll show you another one that's spec for secondaries in a little bit here. And so first up for Comrade Brosk is this Amagi over here. And Amagi is tier 8. Absolutely no major threat to a properly played Yamato, so what you'll see Comrade Brock doing is slowly getting a ship into an angled position so that the Yamagi cannot hurt him. Three hits, and you'll see that managed to damage a turret, but one of those hits was a, probably a bounce, one was an overpen, and one was a penetration. Still, that's still close to, what, almost 6,000 damage on hits that weren't very good. Another salvo, this time only using the front guns. And again, you'll see how quickly the gun is able to reload. So this one, just six hits with the forward guns, four hits there, 16,000 damage. Very, very, very good damage. 
And that's the Yamato's strength. It's that, you know, if it hits you in a citadel, it'll hurt. If it just penetrates you, it'll also hurt. It's like Yamato just doesn't care. Enemy Amagi there was trying to do something with regards to angling. Trying, but failing hard. Trying to get his rear gun and... Four hits, Citadel hit, 30,000 damage, Maki just, well, outright dies with no real effort. Didn't even take really any damage either. Okay, a little bit later on, same battle, Des Moines in front of him and a North Carolina in front of him. And you just know this is not going to end well for any of those ships. North Carolina tries to get angled to the other battleship. Comrade goes, thank you very much. Easy little shot. Fours, again, just a forward, two guns, three citadels, two hits, pff, dead North Carolina, 34,000 damage salvo. Des Moines, obviously not going to last very long against the Yamato, especially out of the open like this. The Des Moines, if it's going to fight any battleship like the Yamato, it's really got to be behind like hard cover. So if that Des Moines was, let's say, behind that island and there was no pressure anywhere else, it's just one-on-one, -on -one, it could potentially spam the Yamato until it dies, but get caught in open ocean like that. Easy, easy, easy kill for the Yamato. And again, you see that rate of fire? It's very, very useful because you can constantly have the guns, cycle shots, and it's... Oh, and also, bow in. You'll notice how Comrade's playing, which is firing the forward guns, turning a little bit, firing the rear gun, turning back angled forward guns. Or a little bit later on, I'm not sure if you'll see it, what he'll do is he'll use... Forward guns to engage a forward ta uh, target, and then rear guns to engage a top uh, a target a little bit to the uh, side. So, easy kills. Next up, Montana, and Montana broadsiding. Oh, dear. That's never a good idea. Your, your ship is already in trouble against the Yamato. You just don't broadside like that. So, another Citadel, another three hits, and you'll see pff, the Montana has lost a nice chunk of HP already. Montana returns fire, does pretty much nothing with his salvo and that's all 12 of the guns on the montana again broadside continues even though the montana is trying but again huge battleship doesn't really turn that quickly another salvo into the broadside and boop 34,000 damage montana is just just getting screwed and even if the montana does angle yamato can still put out massive amounts of damage and the montana just can't match it Kudasov, surprisingly, the Kudasov here has actually taken uh, more hits and not died in comparison to the Montana. Just a little bit of luck there on the Kudasov's part. Still, take a look at those secondaries. No joke, this is the, um, this is probably only, what, advanced firing training on these secondaries. Still deadly, um, but just wait until you see the ones with all the modules and everything else equipped. The biggest sort of difference, again, take a look at this next little exchange here. Montana fires full salvo. Take a look at this. All these shells coming in. Boom, 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 boom. 4,000 something damage. Six shots going back towards the Montana. And the Montana is now actually semi-angled. Um, but six shots in return and bloop, Citadel, one hit, three hits, 18,000 damage. So Montana, no chance in hell. How about Yamato on Yamato? And this time we'll look at a replay from Zampi. And Zampi's playing a secondary build Yamato. Secondary builds being different because they don't have the rate of fire, so the guns do take a little bit longer to reload. But it's a Yamato. I mean, your guns are going to do damage regardless. Enemy Iowa, broadsiding. Such a bad idea. Another turret reloads. Salvo out. And you know that Iowa's going to have a bad day when you see a dispersion like that. Especially against broadside battleships. So there we go. Just three shots. Two Citadels, one hit. Deleted. Enemy Yamato, 70 plus thousand HP against the Ampus at 44,000. Enemy Yamato has an HP advantage, but HP advantage just doesn't mean much. Remember, I did say the only real effective battleship counter to another Yamato is a Yamato. So, yeah, take a look at this. This is going to turn into a full-fledged brawl. Enemy Yamato trying to get his shots onto target here. Fires. Couple thousand damage, 6,000. Return salvo, 34,000 damage. Um, and you don't really, in most cases, when you're fighting on a Yamato, you don't really need that rear gun. Just your four, forward two guns can output ridiculous sums of damage. Uh, there's another shot, 22,000 damage. It's just, that other Yamato is so done. Secondary guns trading loads and loads and loads of fire. And you'll see how 
what happens like later on when you're uh, with fully spec for secondaries and you have a target that's like 10 kilometers away. It, it's it's an utterly terrifying sight where you're on the receiving end of that because there's just so many shells that come raining down at you and then Zambi finishes them off with the rear gun. So that was how many citadels? I think it was like six citadels or something like that. Yeah. Alright, take a look at this other Amagi here. 10 kilometers away. Oh, yes. Just wait, just wait. Wait till the secondaries open up. You'll see. There we go. Secondaries are engaging here. Enemy battleship 10.4 kilometers away, and your secondaries are going to start raining shots. And when I say raining, it looks like rain because it's just non stop flow. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It's just like raining high explosive shells. And they all do set fires, too. Three shots there. <laughs> Knocks out a turret. 14,000 damage. No citadel, just penetration. Very, very, very good damage with the Yamato. The ultimate low pen machine with armor that negates everything else except for another Yamato. And that does it for this tier 10 Japanese battleship Yamato review. If you're thinking about getting any battleship, definitely consider getting this one because according to Wargaming, the Yamato is going to forever have the biggest guns in the game, which means you're pretty much going to be low petting everything forever and ever and ever. So from all that folks, hope you enjoyed this review. Take care, have a great one. I'm looking forward to talking to all of you again very, very, very soon.